What's up everybody? How's it going? Happy Palm Sunday. Now if you're a Christian, this is a really big week because we're looking at Jesus. We're leading up until Easter and really, especially at this time in the world with everything going on, pandemic, what have you, um, the more that we can see Jesus, the better because ultimately we're not living for right now. We're living for eternity. So there's a lot of work to do and um, there's lots of people to encourage and at BWOC Believers World Outreach Church we've been having services online and that has been really fun and I was so um, impressed and my wheels just really started turning when I was looking at this chapter in Matthew and it's Matthew 21 verses 1 through 11 in the NLT. And this was actually our group guide for the service today. So we answered some questions reading this chapter. And I wanted to go through because I had noticed things in here that I had never really seen before or seen in this light. So I'll read it. As Jesus and the disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them ahead and said, Go into the village over there, and as soon as you enter it, you'll see a donkey tied there with a colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you're doing, say, The Lord needs them, and immediately they'll let you take them. So that took place to fulfill the prophecy um, that said, Tell the people of Jerusalem, Look, your king is coming to you. He's humble riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. So, you know, Jesus is rolling in um, on the donkey, rolling deep. The disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was the center, in the center of the procession, and the people were around him shouting, Praise God for the Son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. And I kind of just want to spotlight this because this is fresh for me. Um, it said that they were taking their garments and throwing them on the donkey so Jesus could sit on them and on the road to create a path. And... In the season of life that I'm in, I've been really um, trying to upgrade my wardrobe and different things. And, you know, we all have those nice clothes, like the things that are expensive, impressive, and um, we put them on and we, we wear them to impress the people around us. And I just, the Lord kind of presented me this question slash situation. Like if I was in a polo jacket or shirt and I was rocking it, you know, and it's expensive and it was looking good, um... And all of a sudden, like, Jesus is in town, you know, would I be able to take my garments and throw them down to create a path so that Jesus could literally, like, just walk on them? You know what I'm saying? And in your head, it's like, why would I want somebody's feet on my stuff? You know what I'm saying? A donkey, not even Jesus' feet, like the donkey's feet. Like, this donkey is going to trample on my polo shirt and I'm trying to look good and trying to take my clothes to the dry cleaners and and that's really the challenge that I kind of want to present with you guys today because even me I was like dang I don't know if I'd want to throw my clothes on the ground because I want to keep them nice but anything that you do for Jesus he, like he's more valuable than any clothes anything and even like, you know, when you go in somebody's house, they're like, hey, take off your shoes, you know, and it's like, what's more valuable, like your company's feet or the carpet that you're trying to keep clean? And you're, I know you could say like, well, I want to keep my carpet clean. Well, you know, your house is for habitation. It's a tool that you can use to invite people in and have people over and bring people into your lives. And I never want to have that demeanor to where, like, oh, I don't, I won't throw my clothes at the ground to make a path for Jesus. Like, I don't want to hold anything back when it comes to giving to God um, and to be a part, really, of what 
Jesus is doing. Because all those people that day, they threw their stuff down and they got to be a part of welcoming Jesus in. And it really comes down to priorities, getting our priorities right. And that's something that had really challenged me because, I mean, you guys, like, we try to keep our stuff nice in the name of stewardship, but stewardship has a purpose. Stewardship has a purpose. Like, if you're keeping your stuff clean, you, you have a wonderful house and you keep it clean, but if you never have anybody over, then you're just, you're a little bit selfish. You know, you're not really sharing the goodness that you have curated and crafted. You're, you're just keeping it all to yourself. And I'm all for a clean home. I mean, like, I'm just saying the furniture is for people to sit on. The carpet is for people to walk on. The dinner table is to have people at it, you know? And um, I just really want to challenge us with that sort of thought-provoking thing. I'll go through the group guide um, just because I think it's very beneficial. And again, this is the Believer's World Outreach Church group guide that we were doing today. Um, you can find it on the website. We're having a 5 o'clock service. If you're watching today, um, which today is April 5th on a Sunday, so... Five o'clock service, if you can catch that, that would be super cool. But here's the questions. So, um, we have all of these people welcoming Jesus, praising, like there's this big scene. And the first question was, what is the main message that God is sharing here? And we, as the body of Christ, need to celebrate Jesus corporately. And on one side, we're doing it as a witness to those that are outside looking in. But another aspect of celebrating is just us being pumped together. So like this week, who are you getting pumped with about Jesus? Um, you know, like when you're texting them or you're on the phone with them, it's like, man, I am so excited for what Jesus is doing. It's like, wow, I'm excited too with all of these services going online. I mean, it's a great opportunity to um, share the gospel, a, a gospel presentation with somebody because you know it's going to be going on this week, you know. So there's a lot of celebrating that we can do corporately um, amongst ourselves. First and foremost, we need to celebrate Jesus just because of, you know, our relationship with him. But it is a witness, um, and we're aware of that. So we want to celebrate Jesus corporately. And two, what is Jesus telling you to obey through this? And mine was, I, I will be generous, you know. I don't want to hold anything back. I want to, if I have a shirt on or something and Jesus is coming in or I have a jacket, like, I want to be able to take that and just throw it on the ground because Jesus is way more valuable than, you know, the clothes that I buy or the money that I spend on something. Like, everything's for Jesus. I want to be super generous, especially in this season. And the third question is, who else needs to hear this truth? And that's kind of what inspired me to make this video today because, I mean, who else needs to hear this truth? Obviously, like, I have lots of friends, and in this quarantine, and I have really been checking on people, calling people more so um, than the norm, and that has been a real blessing. But I also want to be able to reach my extended friends, people on Facebook, so all that to be said, like, you know, if you're watching this video on Facebook or on Instagram and you do have a relationship with Jesus, be encouraged. Celebrate him this week. It's a really big week. Share stuff that you see churches doing. Um, this is a great opportunity to get Jesus in people's homes on live stream and what have you. Um, but if you're watching this video and you're my friend and you don't know Jesus, well, this is a great opportunity to tell you about him. You know, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the one who came in our place to take the sin problem from the beginning of the world, that Adam and Eve, um, their disobedience brought sin into the world, and we lived through that all of these years, and then Jesus came and he said, hey, I'll trade you the sin, the disobedience, I'll go ahead and beat that so that you can just say yes, and I'll make it super easy for you to be in a right relationship with God, and I'll bring you into a relationship with me. I want to do life with you. So um, ultimately, that is the gospel story. And so maybe you want to say yes to Jesus right now. Um, maybe you, you're not really sure. You're like, man, ah, gosh, Travis, I don't know. I want to get my life clean before I say yes to Jesus. Um, hey, 
you don't got like Jesus is putting his foot forward. He's saying, hey, I want to know you. I want to be in a relationship with you. Um, and you don't have to wait, my friend. That's what I'm trying to say. You don't have to wait to say yes to Jesus. You don't have to wait until you, you get your life right because then you're always cleaning up before you go to God. And you can never really like be vulnerable because you think maybe God's out to get you or he's, he's not that way. God loves you and he loves you where you are and he loves you enough to not let you stay where you are um, because life is about growing. Life is about getting better. Even if you're a Christian, we want to keep on growing. So all that to be said, um, if you want to say yes to Jesus, I'll pray with you right now and you can repeat after me. Um, just say, Jesus, I need a Savior and I confess you as Lord of my life right now. Save me, Jesus. I will live for you the rest of my life, and I can't wait for my home in heaven that you are preparing for me. Thank you, God. I am a Christian today because Jesus was buried and resurrected, and I confess that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool, it's as simple as that. So if you prayed that prayer, you're a Christian. Uh, welcome to the family. Get on one of these live streams. Get in a church, and that would be a really good thing. This week, we're talking about Palm Sunday. Anyways, okay, I love you, I love you, I love you, um, and I'll see you soon.